entity relationship model is a very useful model. And it's uh, basically widely used everywhere. However, it can also be a very confusing concept because when you think about mapping real world things, uh, real world business question into a model, there are so many different components and uh, each one is interacting with each other. How can you make it uh, easy to understand? Um, there's a saying that saying that um, you know, one picture paints a thousand words and that actually works pretty well in, in this um, entity relationship model thing because we have this tool called entity relationship diagram which draws visually the data model, the entity relationship model, which uh, provides a very useful, which proved to be very useful in making people understand what the model is about. So in the entity relationship model, you will draw each entity as a rectangle. Each entity will be a rectangle. Then you will use lines to represent the relationship. If two entities have a relationship in between, you draw a line between the entity, then you will use certain kind of a line or line marker to rep represent the relationship cardinality, whether it's a one to many, one, one to many, many to many, and you use other words and um, text and uh, bullets to mark down the, the attributes of uh, entity and the relationship. Originally, the entity relationship the, the, the uh, diagram was uh, invented by Peter Chen in 1976. Um, that's his, and what you are seeing here is his uh, original entity relationship diagram. You can see that uh, entities are represented by the rectangles, just like we, what we said. But then here he is using a uh, diamond shape for re, uh, to display relationship. And for example, a department between de department and the employee. Between department and the employee, there's this department employee relationship. And the, between dependent and employee, there's this dependent employee dependent relationship. And though you use uh, text like one or n, to, to signify it is to, to, to show that it's a one-to-many relationship. And here you have a many-to-many -many um, many -many relationship using M and N. Chance diagram quickly proved to be very useful, but uh, uh, I mean, the idea of entity relationship uh, diagram, certainly you can see that it's very useful when you have multiple entities and the relationships, this can be very helpful in understanding, in helping people understanding what this entity relationship model is about. But uh, the way Chen draws the diagram, um, as we look back from today, seems like a little bit redundant. For one thing, if you have a relationship between department and the employee, then we know it's a department employee relationship. Why do you still need to give it a name? Like, uh, why do you still need to draw a picture of, uh, of diamond, diamond, right? And also you are writing one and N or M here, which uh, when you have free text, usually this is not uh, as good looking as it, it can be. Uh, people pre prefer, when you do visualization, you prefer to use the chart itself, the line style itself or line and marker itself to represent the relationship instead of uh, writing text there. So gradually there are like uh, changes, like originally you have a student and the course relationship between uh, the relationship between these two entities is registration. You use a diamond to represent and you put an N or M, M N here to represent a M to M relationship, many to many relationship. Then you use a oval to for each attribute and use lines to extend the, to connect the, the attribute and the, the entity to show that these are the, the attribute of the entity, or this is the 
relation, the attribute of a relationship. However, apparently there are more space here and we, we don't want to have so many ovals coming out. It, more, it, looks, it doesn't look elegant. So one variant is to move the attribute inside, inside into the entity itself. And uh, then you will have an underscore for the primary key. Now this is one variant. There are also many other variants created over the years just to make it more visualized, just to make the entity relationship diagram more visualized. One way that you commonly see is arrow diagram where you still have entities, but we are removing the diamond. So each line, now each line represents a relationship. The rela relationship cardinality is, uh, is uh, marked by, is illustrated by the arrow in the end. Now there's one issue with this representation, re this way, uh, this arrow diagram though, is uh, what does the arrow mean? Does the arrow mean one or does the arrow mean many? Most books use an arrow to represent one to many, which means the, the direction that arrow points to is a one side. And uh, if you do not have arrow, it's an M side. However, there are books using the other way around, which caused a lot of confusion. So if so, this is not something that we are going to use here. I'm mentioning it here because you will see it in other textbooks. And I want to warn you that when you see this arrow diagram in any textbook, you need to make sure you understand the, the textbooks convention. Is that a one too many or is that a one side for the arrow? Once you see arrow, is that a one side or a many side? You need to look at it and make sure you get, you get the convention of the textbook. Uh, for us, we're not going to use it. Instead, we are going to use what they call a crawfoot diagram. Crawfoot is like this. This is the crawfoot shape, right? This is the crawfoot shape. We will use crawfoot to represent many. If you do not have a crawfoot, then there's the, this is a one. So, and this is easier to remember because if it's one, there's only one line. If it's many, there are three lines. So it's easier to see that it's a one-to-many relationship and it's a many-to-many -many relationship where the relationship will simply be a line. Now, if you have relationship attributes, you can insert a rectangle here, pointing here to represent the, you can insert the one more relationship uh, rectangle here between student and the course to represent the, the relationship. And uh, we, we talked about minimum and uh, maximum cardinality. There's also a way to do that, which is drawing a zero or drawing a one to represent zero and one here. So in textbook, page 16, this is a, a you will see this example and telling you what this zero and the many and the one and the one can mean. So one, and one to one is apparently means each department, um, each employee must have a, at least one at the most one department. Now, what if an employee can have at least zero at the most one department? Then that's zero one. And this is how you are supposed to draw it with a zero, with a one. And uh, also here is a one with a one and a one, minimum one, maximum one. But for many side, this is zero and M. You have a zero here and a many in the crawl foot. And then you have a, or the other way is you have one and a many, one and the many side on a crawl foot. So this is a, this can be confusing, but uh, uh, once you start drawing, you will find this very useful. Now, as a data scientist, a data scientist, you are not supposed to draw 
uh, I think your job requirement usually will not require you to draw uh, entity relationship diagram yourself, but it's very common for uh, either you are at work or in your interview that uh, they, you will be provided with an entity relationship model and uh, people will ask you what this means. Either this can be an interview or maybe the um, the database management team or just uh, is just too busy so they just threw you the entity relationship model so you will be able you should be able to read this uh, cardinality and uh, this uh, entity relationship and identify uh, different uh, properties so this will be also be a part of our homework <laughs>